Bonjour everybody, I'm Alex and welcome back to my channel Alex and his bags. So today I'm going to give you my unsolicited opinions about Hermes bags. I actually looked at the website from France, Spain, Canada and United States because those are four different stocks um, to see which bags you could actually purchase online uh, and I will give you my honest opinion about these bags. So there is about 25 bags and I just want to say that obviously these are my personal opinions. If you actually do like those bags, it's perfectly fine. Second thing I wanted to say is that I actually classify Hermes bags in three categories. The first one being the Iconics, which are obviously the Kelly, Birkin and Constance. Uh, those are not available on the website, so I won't mention them today. The second category is the classics, which includes bags that have been around for a while in the catalog or do actually have a classic look. And the third category is the what the F uh, bags. Uh, I feel like those bags are either outdated, um, overpriced, but a lot more than the classic overpricing from Hermes. Um, and also I don't really understand their design or who would be interested. So without further ado, let's get into it and we will start with the classic bags. So about classic bags, the first one is actually a pouch which I found on the French website. Uh, it's called the Pochette Gige Elan 29 Touch. I don't know if the name is actually just because it has exotic leather because it also exists in all um, classic leather. Uh, but this one particularly does have some crocodile or alligator, I don't know, leather on the handle and on the edge. I do think it's a really nice pouch, I really enjoy the design, I feel like it's really classic um, but still kind of modern and timeless. Uh, I do feel like it's really overpriced but it might be just on the, because of the exotic leather, I don't know. Uh, I do love this one in pops of colors, this one especially is in Rouge de Coeur and I feel like it's just so beautiful. The second bag I'm going to mention today is the Bolin 31. It actually comes in two uh, shapes, let's say. So there is the Bolin 31 and there is also the Bolin 1923, which is around the same bag, but the first one is a bit more slouchy and supple and the second one is more structured and more futuristic. Uh, the first one also has this kind of, uh, I don't know, rounded shape between the handles, whereas the other one doesn't. Uh, I actually don't know what this shape is for. Um, both come with a shoulder strap, which is really nice. It's removable, but I believe it's not adjustable. The thing is with this bag, a lot of people say it's too much like the Alma, and the Alma obviously has a really better price point. I can understand that, but I actually do prefer this one over the Alma. I feel like it has a better... Um, vibe is more classic looking, it's more elegant looking as well, whereas the Alma is more casual in my opinion. It's also interesting to know that this has been around since 1923, which is a lot, and it's apparently one or the one first bag with a zipper. I know, right? Like, what did they used to do before? But probably clasp or flaps, I don't know. But this is really interesting in an historical, like, bag passion kind of way, in my opinion. I do think they are quite expensive at 5,950 euros, which is, in my opinion, a bit too much close uh, from the Birkin and the Kelly. And that is the only reason why I wouldn't buy this bag. Otherwise, I do think it's really cute. Uh, also, it comes in a mini size, which is around 3,000 euros or 4,000 euros, and it's really the cutest ever. In my opinion, it's just too expensive for this kind of simple bag, which is a bit like the same message we will have uh, at the Hermes bags. Next up is the Hermes 2002 bag, which is actually uh, from uh, the 70s or something like this. Uh, this one we have on the website, I believe, is a reissue, or actually it was modernized. Uh, I don't know if they discontinued it, but I know it's not quite the same as it used to be. It's a bit more um, modern, in my opinion. The one in the 70s was already uh, kind of modern and futuristic, and this is why they call it like that. Uh, I do really like this bag. I think it's very reminiscent from the Constance, obviously, but it has a twist. The clasp is really different. It's a bit more modern. It's a bit more, uh, I don't know, a bit more original in my opinion and I do think it's kind of a good alternative for the Constance if you don't want to have the pain of looking for one and also uh, the price is in my opinion really similar to the Constance. I actually just don't know how they do on the pre love market because I know for the Constance uh, if you purchase one in store the minute you go out of the store it has 
doubled in price or something like this whereas this one probably is not as popular uh, since also you can find it on the website but i still think it's a really cute bag especially in the scholar combo there is also one which is in canvas if it wasn't that crazy price i would have purchased it because i actually really love the look of it i think it's more masculine and more modern with this canvas and leather version the next bag is the her bag which i have some mixed feelings about let's say uh, I do believe it's really cute, um, but I think it's not the most practical and I also think it looks unfinished. First of all, the clasp, I do really like it. I think the shape overall is very reminiscent of the Kelly, which is something I like, but it doesn't look very practical. Uh, the Kelly opening is already not so practical, but this one actually looks worse. So maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. With Hermes, I feel like either you don't have any opening, either you have a crazy opening, which is like a pain to open and close every time so i guess you have to make a choice um the other thing that actually bothers me is the back pocket which is outside of the bag and i still don't understand their choice in this design this one in my opinion looks like an unfinished casual bag um, it retails for 2040 euros which is not that bad but know that the vast majority of the bag is actually canvas. Next bag is also on the same family as the 2002 and the Constance bags, in my opinion. It's the Vero bag, which in my opinion is also very cute. Uh, this one in particular is in this bright pink, and I think it makes the bag entirely. The clasp I do really like. I think it's very intricate and very original as well. You don't see that a lot. Uh, and maybe it's not the most practical, I actually have no clue, but it really looks... And I do have another one which is also very similar, which is the Sac Mosaic O24. Um, once again, the same shape. I do love the intricate design of the clasp. I don't know if it's the actual clasp or if it's just a decoration. Um, but once again, I do not have the price in euros for this one, but it's probably 6,000 euros as well. And to me, uh, even if they are cute, I would only consider the Hermes 2002, if not the Hermes Constance. Another one that is cute, but I actually don't have the price as well, is the Sac Cherche Midi Mini. So I don't know the size as well. It's probably too small for the price it is, but I do think it's really cute. It has the famous, I don't know how it's called, um, Hermes buckle, like you see it a lot on bracelets especially. Um, and in that color, it looks really cute. Also, you do have a adjustable shoulder strap and I think it's always a plus. I do think also it has a classic shape, looks a bit like a baguette or something. I mean, to me, it's always overpriced, but if you have the money and if you love the look and want something a bit different, I do think it's a nice uh, thing. It looks timeless. I don't think it will look dated or whatever. So I do think it's a nice uh, piece to have. Next one is called the Plume 2. Uh, so it's a bag that actually comes in bigger sizes but I wasn't able to find them on the website and to be honest, I actually don't like them. The only size I do like is the mini because it makes the bag, instead of looking like a big bowling bag rectangular and which doesn't make any sense, it looks like a little box and I do think it makes the entire difference. It looks cute, probably overpriced as well, uh, but at least uh, it looks really nice. The shoulder strap is removable as well and it comes in a lot of colors. I do believe though the mini is more hard to get than the classic. This one is called the Pochette Médor, which is another pouch. This one I'm a bit on the verge as well. I know it's a classic shape, it's a classic alternative also to the Collier de Chien. I just think it's a bit more overdone right now. I don't think this kind of big embellishment are what you should invest in, especially if you want to have something a bit classic and timeless. Um, I do think it's cute, I really like this color as well. But to me, it's just too much money to invest in something that already looks a bit dated. And last but not least is the Evelyn bag. Um, I did find a lot of Evelyn bags. I don't think I need to present this bag. It's very common. It also exists in a cellier uh, shape, which I would more classify in the what the F uh, category because I don't think it looks very beautiful. But the classic uh, Evelyn, I really enjoy. I think it's really cute. It's not particularly my style. Maybe in the TPM, but otherwise it's not. Um, it's very slouchy, it's very casual, but I do think you could still go to work with it or spend the weekend with it. Obviously, you can't really go out with it. Uh, I don't think it's really the vibe, but it's a nice entry-level bag as well. It's around 3,000 euros, which is not that bad at Hermes, as you've seen. Uh, so I do think it's quite a nice uh, piece and a nice entry-level, even if some people think 
is overdone. I, I do think it's like the Speedy and the Neverfull. Uh, people buy it for a reason. So let's go to the what the F uh, section of Hermes. The first one is the Minodier Clou Medor. This one I feel like it's actually cute, but I don't understand who would pay 7,600 euros for a tiny clutch like this. Like, to me, it's really about the price for this one. I do think the design is very cute. The color is again Rouge de Coeur, so one of my favorite color from Hermes. Um, and the design can be very classic. Uh, I just don't understand the price of these. This one, on the other hand, I don't understand anything about it. Uh, first of all, it does exist in plain leather and I don't like it as well. I think it's a bag that looks really dated. Um, doesn't look like it was a lot of effort put towards it. Um, and I don't think it looks elegant. Uh, but this one particularly, which has some silk details, I just think it's ugly. Like, I really don't know who would actually like this, but moreover, who would pay 4,000 euros for a semi-leather and semi-silk bag. It really doesn't make any sense to me. This one I put in the what the F section because I actually like the design. I feel like it's a bit more constructed and a, a bit more original than a classic tote um, or top handle. I don't know if you can actually wear it on the shoulder, but my problem once again was the price, 4,000 euros for a simple bag like that. I really don't understand. Uh, I do like the effort putting towards the colors, you mean, I mean, you have a, a coral, you have a pink and you have a brown. And I do think the end result is actually really good, but I don't think this bag will be a major success due to the price. It also doesn't have a shoulder strap apparently, so it doesn't look really practical. Um, probably no fits either. Um, yeah, I really think this bag won't go far. I think it's not so old, so maybe I'm mistaken, but I think this bag is actually not so old and that's why I'm putting it in the what the F uh, section. One that I should actually put in the classic section, but I really didn't want to, uh, is the Lindy, which is also a classic bag from Hermes, but I hate it so much that I just couldn't put it in the classic section. To me, it's the what the F bag and I still don't understand what uh, is going on, like why is it still produced? This bag to me looks old, it looks dated, it looks not practical, um, it doesn't look good at all. I don't know, it, it does have some shape, I can see it. It does have some feet, it does have some top handles, a strap, uh, it can be open and closed. I mean, there is a lot of nice things about it, but the end results, I just feel like it's ugly. And I still, I know we all have different tastes and I still don't understand why people like this bag. I know it came out in a mini size recently and I do admit that the mini size makes it a bit cuter. I still don't understand this bag. Since I'm getting a bit bored with these, I'm just going to show you pictures of bags that I really don't understand. And I think just by showing it to you, you really understand. So uh, this one is like, what the fuck? This one, I actually think they did put an effort in it. Uh, it's called the Alzan, um, but once again, the end result is not really nice and I still think in black it's okay-ish, but in colors you can see that it looks weird. And another one is the Sac Opli Chen, which doesn't make any sense also. You know, the Bastia coin purse is already expensive for what it is because it's basically a piece of leather that is folded. The only thing that fix the leather is the pressure button. And this is a bit like this for the Opli Chen. I actually don't know if something is stitched inside this bag. Uh, but it looks like a big version of the Bastia coin purse. Once again, I don't mind. I really enjoy my Bastia coin purse and I think it's really practical, but I do already think it's a bit overpriced. So when I see this bag, which is 6,700 uh, Canadian dollars, uh, probably at least three or 4,000 euros, I just don't get it. Like you can probably buy a nice quality leather and do it yourself. And I know it's their strategy to be always on top of the market, but sometimes you can't just have principle for the sake of principle, you do have to justify them, you know? Another bag I really don't understand is the Silky City bag. 
So I really don't like the version in silk, but I guess whatever, if you like it, just go for it. I think it's very plain, once again, no crop from silk, and you pay 1000 euros for a silk bag. The other one I don't really understand is the Silky City, which is full leather, like silky for me is silk. So why do you call the Silky City if it's not silk? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's also 2370 euros for a pouch with uh, two holes and a handle. To stay on the what the F section, and this one is one of the craziest in my opinion, um, and I will try to stay calm with it because this bag actually makes me angry. Uh, this is the Double Sens 45 touch bag. Um, how do I put this politely? I think people at Hermes are actually uh, fooling us. Um, this is basically a tote, which is reversible. So why not? I think it's a really fun way to have two in one bags. Um, the only issue I have is, first of all, the shape is a bit weird, in my opinion. It's like a square tote, and usually the totes are either like high up or large, but not square, and I don't really understand that choice. Whatever, maybe some people do. The only thing I don't understand is the price point of this tote because I think in France it's about 4,000 euros or something like that and I'm like, it's a fucking tote. Like Saint Laurent does it for 700 euros. You can even have a Neverfull in leather for 1,500 euros or something like this. Um, I'm probably sure you can have a tote at Chanel which is less expensive than that. I really don't understand the price point of this one, but the mystery is not over yet, you know? There is also the Double Sens Strap Maxi, which is apparently another thing, which is the same bag, but with a strap, and so it comes at 7,200 euros, which means that the strap and the hooks, I guess, cost you almost 3,000 euros, like, I feel like it's a bit expensive for a strap, you know? And the thing that actually makes me Angry with this one is that, as I said, it's a reversible tote, so it means that you have two bags in one, I guess, because normally you should have two colors, but this one is actually the same color, so what is the fucking point of this bag? Because it's like the price of a uh, Kelly, for example, um, it doesn't look good, and you actually can't return it, well, you can, but it's actually the same bag if you return it. So what is actually the point of this bag? To end on a lighter note, even if I don't like it, I will end with the Gypsy bag, which is uh, another statement I could have put in the classic section. Um, I just don't think it's cute. Uh, in my opinion, it's not because you put the Birkin or the Kelly opening on a bag that it looks cute and this is the perfect example. So yeah, that's it for this video. I know I was very passionate about some of this bag. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm just like not sensitive to Hermes, but I do think um, they are not good at designs. I do think they are not modern and they are not trendsetters and I think it's a problem from Hermes because they are always telling like, oh, you should love the entire Hermes world, you should like love all of our bags, not just the Birkin, not just the Kelly, but I mean, I would like to, I would like to try, but they are all ugly. And you know, I'm saying this with a lot of respect and obviously, as I said, they are not all ugly, but they, there is not so much bags that I would actually consider because they either look outdated, like nonsense, or very pricey and I figured that if I save my money um, I do prefer to buy a bag that I actually like even if it's just Saint Laurent or just Gucci or whatever rather than having an ugly Hermes bag you know what I mean uh, I also think that at that price point it would have to be bags that would stand the test of time. So yeah, that's it guys for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to let me know in the comments down below your opinions on these bags. And if you own any of them, uh, if I am wrong on any of them, please let me know. Uh, obviously, this is in good fun, so please don't take anything personally. You can follow me on Instagram at Alex and his bags if you want. And I will see you very soon in a new video. Bye bye.